Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start on my review of Ozma of Oz by L. Frank Baum. So this is the third book in the Wizard of Oz series. I'm reading this as a buddy read with Joel Swagman because we're going through all of the Oz books together, one book every two weeks. As always, I'm going to read you the blurb, then I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs, and I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, Dane reads... Shipwrecked. After a dreadful storm, Dorothy finds herself in the land of Ev, where lunchboxes grow on trees and the strange wheelers leave warnings in the sand. She makes new friends, Belina the hen, TikTok the mechanical man, and of course the beautiful Ozma, ruler of the land of Oz. Together they set off to rescue the unhappy Queen of Ev, who with her ten children has been imprisoned by the fearsome Gnome King. At last they reach his mountain palace, only to find themselves at the mercy of his terrible magic. So right away, TikTok, great name, does just make me think of TikTok though. So when uh, when she meets Belene and we get, uh, my name is Bill, said the yellow hen somewhat gruffly. Bill, why that's a boy's name. What difference does that make? You're a lady hen, aren't you? Of course, but when I was first hatched out, no one could tell whether I was going to be a hen or a rooster. So the little boy at the farm where I was born called me Bill and made a pet of me because I was the only yellow chicken in the whole brood. When I grew up and he found that I didn't crow and fight as all the roosters do, he did not think to change my name and every creature in the barnyard as well as the people in the house knew me as Bill. So Bill I've always been called and Bill is my name. And Dorothy's like, uh, it's all wrong don't you know, declared Dorothy earnestly. And if you don't mind, I shall call you Belina. Putting the Ena on the end makes it a girl's name you see. Oh, okay. So I'd be Dane Ena, and the hen's eating some ants, and Dorothy says it's dreadful. Why, eating live things and horrid bugs and crawly ants? You should be ashamed of yourself. Goodness me, returned the hen in a puzzled tone. How queer you are, Dorothy. Live things are much fresher and more wholesome than dead ones, and you humans eat all sorts of dead creatures. We don't, said Dorothy. You do indeed, answered Belina. You eat lambs and sheep and cows and pigs and even chicken. But we cook them, said Dorothy triumphantly. What difference does that make? A good deal, said the girl in a graver tone. I can't just explain the difference, but it's there. Yeah, I mean, I'm vegan, so I don't know. I don't eat any of the stuff that Dorothy or the chicken eats. And um, so she meets the wheelers and it get, we get, um, it had the form of a man except that it walked, or rather rolled, upon all fours and its legs were the same length as its arms, given the appearance of the four legs of a beast. Yet it was no beast that Dorothy had discovered, for the person was clothed most gorgeously in embroidered garments of many colors and wore a straw hat perched jauntily upon the side of its head. But it differed from human beings in this respect, that instead of hands and feet there grew at the end of its arms and legs round wheels, and by means of these wheels it rolled very swiftly over the level ground. Afterwards Dorothy found that these odd wheels were of the same hard substance that our fingernails and toenails are composed of, and she also learned that creatures of this strange race were born in this queer fashion. And yes, yeah, so it's keratin. Nice. This illustration here is a wheeler, it looks terrifying. She looks like a uh, clown a little bit. And uh, we get a reference to the Tin Man, a uh, woodman named Nick Chopper. I forgot that Nick Chopper was his name. It just, I, I'm sure it wasn't mentioned in the original story. And here is TikTok, the Machine Man. And uh, he looks a bit like, you know, Sergeant Peppery or Yellow Submarine. I wonder if the Beatles were inspired by like the, these illustrations in particular. Yeah, TikTok says, uh, there is no alarm connected with my machinery. I can tell the time though by speaking and as I never sleep I can waken you at any hour you wish to get up in the morning. That's nice, said the little girl. Only I never wish to get up in the morning. Yeah, me neither. Charles Bukowski said never get out of bed before noon and I kind of subscribe to that. TikTok's inventors, uh, we get. They're both gone, replied the machine. Mr. Smith was an artist as well as an inventor and he painted a picture of a river which was so natural that as he was reaching across it to paint some flowers on the opposite bank, he fell into the water and was drowned. Oh, I'm sorry for that, exclaimed the little girl. Mr. Tinker, continued TikTok, made a ladder so tall that he could rest the end of it against the moon while he stood on the highest rung and picked the little stars to get in the points of the king's crown. But when he got to the moon, Mr. Tinker found it such a lovely place that he decided to live there. So he pulled up the ladder after him and we have never seen him since. And uh, TikTok kind of summarizes the plot of the second book, the last book. There was a revolution in the land of Oz and the Scarecrow was deposed by a soldier woman named General Ginger. And then Ginger was deposed by a little girl named Ozma, who was the rightful heir to the throne and now rules the land under the title of Ozma of Oz. And we get to see her later on, we get to see how they're getting on. Uh, this was very cute, there's a the princess, she changes her head. She, it, it turns out she always wears the same white dress because she can change her head instead of changing her clothes. Uh, but. I guess a kid or somebody, somebody who previously owned this has uh, coloured this in. And actually that's quite a startling <laughs> illustration of someone taking their own head off. Very cool photo uh, image of the Hungry Tiger. I don't know why I said photo. It's not as though it's like super photo realistic. Uh, so I like the Hungry Tiger because he's a tiger with a conscience. So we get um, 
Dreadfully hungry, answered the tiger, snapping his jaws together with a fierce click. Then why don't you eat something, she asked. It's no use, said the tiger sadly. I've tried that, but I always get hungry again. Why, it is the same with me, said Dorothy, yet I keep on eating. But you eat harmless things, so it doesn't matter, replied the tiger. For my part, I'm a savage beast and have an appetite for all sorts of poor little living creatures, from a chipmunk to fat babies. How dreadful, said Dorothy. Isn't it, though, returned the hungry tiger, licking his lips with his long red tongue. Fat babies, don't they sound delicious? But I've never eaten any, because my conscience tells me it is wrong. If I had no conscience, I would probably eat the babies and then get hungry again, which would mean that I had sacrificed the poor babies for nothing. No, hungry I was born and hungry I shall die, but I shall not have any cruel deeds on my conscience to be sorry for. I think you are a very good tiger, said Dorothy, patting the huge head of the beast. In that you are mistaken, was the reply. I am a good beast, perhaps, but a disgracefully bad tiger, for it is the nature of tigers to be cruel and ferocious, and in refusing to eat harmless living creatures, I am acting as no good tiger as ever before acted. That is why I left the forest and joined my friend the cowardly lion. And, I don't know, I just think those arguments, I mean, that's why I'm vegan, because the same reason he doesn't eat babies, I don't eat animals. And then later on he says, uh, he, he meets uh, the little maid Nanda and he says, You certainly look delicious. Will you kindly give me permission to eat you? No, 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 cried the maid in reply. And so the tiger doesn't. And that's the sa another vegan thing. Like, it's vegan to eat human beings if they give you consent. The issue is that animals can't give consent. But if a human being said to me, like, do you want to eat my foot? I'd, be, I'd probably still say no, but I could say yes and it would still be considered vegan as long as it was willingly given. That's why uh, human breast milk is, uh, that's why human breast milk is vegan, and that's why semen is also vegan, because it's willingly given. Unless you're like, hey, hey, bitch, get off my, <laughs> I can't say that. <laughs> Sorry, that was, that I feel bad for that. That was fairly chauvinist. <laughs> And I like this, there's a private in this as well, and um, he's actually like the bravest member of the army, but we get. The generals commanded the colonels, and the colonels commanded the majors, and the majors commanded the captains, and the captains commanded the private, who marched with an air of proud importance because it required so many officers to give him his orders. And I love this great line here that TikTok comes up with. So basically they go to see like the gnome king or the gnome prince, and he's, he's turned uh, a bunch of people into ornaments and um, we get, I am in great sorrow over the loss of my old comrade, the Tin Woodman. We have had many dangerous adventures together and escaped them all, and now it grieves me to know he has become an ornament and is lost to me forever. He was always an ornament to society, said TikTok. Wow, what a line. Aren't we all just ornaments to society? Oh, and then Ginger comes back. She was in the last book, uh, The Marvelous Land of Oz. Um... <sighs> So yeah, Dorothy looked wonderingly, hate that word, at the lively appearing person who had once assembled an army of women and driven the Scarecrow from the throne of the Emerald City and even fought a battle with the powerful army of Glinda the Sorceress. And then we find out what's happened to her. I've married a man who owns nine cows, said Ginger to Ozma, and now I am happy and contented and willing to lead a quiet life and mind my own business. Where is your husband, asked Ozma. He is in the house, nursing a black eye, replied Ginger calmly. The foolish man would insist upon milking the red cow when I wanted him to milk the white one. But he will know better next time, I'm sure. And I love the ambiguity there. Was it the cow that gave him the black eye, or was it Ginger who gave him the black eye for not doing what she told him to do? And then I just thought this was very cool and a nice little workaround as well. Um, basically, Dorothy wants to go home, and they found this magic belt, and she realises she can use the belt to go home. Um, but we get, and then continued Dorothy, if I ever wanted to come back here again, the belt would bring me. In that you are wrong, said the sorceress. The belt has magical powers only while it is in some fairy country, such as the land of Oz or the land of Ev. Indeed, my little friend, were you to wear it and wish yourself in Australia with your uncle, the wish would doubtless be fulfilled, because it was made in fairyland. But you would not find the magic belt around you when you arrived at your destination. What would become of it? asked the girl. It would be lost, as were your silver shoes when you visited Oz before, and no one would ever see it again. It seems too bad to destroy the use of the magic belt in that way, doesn't it? Then, said Dorothy, after a moment's thought, I will give the magic belt to Ozma, for she can use it in her own country, and she can wish me transported to Uncle Henry without losing the belt. That is a wise plan, replied Glenda. So they rode back to the Emerald City, and on the way it was arranged that every Saturday morning Ozma would look at Dorothy in her magic picture, wherever the little girl might chance to be. And, if she saw Dorothy make a certain signal, then Ozma would know that the little Kansas girl wanted to revisit the Land of Oz, and by means of the Gnome King's magic belt would wish that she might instantly return. Very clever. I like that. So yeah, Ozma of Oz by L. Frank Baum. I mean, 
I enjoyed it. Again, I, I just really enjoy this series. I don't really like uh, fairy tales, but I think um, Baum just, he, he kind of subverts a lot of the tropes, you know. Um, Joel said in his review of The Marvelous Land of Oz, which I'll link to below, and check out his channel for his thoughts on, uh, on Ozma of Oz. But he said that he sort of sees uh, Baum's writing style a bit like, it's almost veering towards like Pratchett and Neil um, and Douglas Adams because it's very whimsical and very playful and humorous, you know. And I would agree, and I think that's what makes me enjoy these books. So I gave this one a pretty solid 3.5 out of 5. I am looking forward to the next one. So, uh, yeah. So there we have it, that's what I made of Ozma of Oz by L. Frank Baum. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.